Pulmonary ventilation, or breathing, is induced by changes in the volume of the lungs and the air pressure within them. During normal inhalation, the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles contract and the ribcage elevates. As the volume of the lungs increases, air pressure in the lungs drops below atmospheric pressure and air rushes in. During normal exhalation, the muscles relax, the lungs become smaller, pressure inside them rises, and air is expelled. Boyle's Law explains this relationship between volume and air pressure. An increase in the volume of a container lowers the pressure of the air inside. A decrease in the volume raises pressure in the reduced space. The body's demand for more oxygen can change normal breathing to forced breathing. Additional muscles increase the changes in volume of the thoracic cavity so that more air can pass in and out more rapidly. Inside the lungs, oxygen from the air is exchanged for waste carbon dioxide from the bloodstream. This process of external respiration takes place in hundreds of millions of microscopic sacs called alveoli. Oxygen from inhaled air diffuses from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries surrounding them and is pumped through the bloodstream. Carbon dioxide from oxygen-depleted blood diffuses from the capillaries into the alveoli and is expelled through exhalation. Gas exchange occurs in the lungs as oxygen diffuses from alveoli into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide diffuses from the bloodstream into the alveoli. Dalton's law explains that in a gas mixture, the pressure exerted by each gas is independent. The gas mixture in the alveolus has a high oxygen partial pressure, while the partial pressure of oxygen in the surrounding pulmonary capillaries is low. For this reason, the oxygen diffuses from the alveolus into the pulmonary capillary. Carbon dioxide diffuses out of the capillary and into alveoli for the same reason. The trachea conveys air between upper and lower respiratory structures. This flexible tube extends from the larynx to the upper chest where it divides into the bronchi. Between 15 and 20 cartilaginous C-shaped rings keep the trachea from collapsing or overexpanding. The shape of these cartilaginous rings allows the trachea to change shape to accommodate masses of food passing through the esophagus. Smooth muscle of the trachea can contract to decrease its diameter, which allows air to be expelled out of the lungs more forcefully during coughing. The trachea divides into the bronchi and bronchioles in the lungs. Relaxation of smooth muscle in the bronchioles during exercise causes them to dilate. This bronchodilation allows greater ventilation. Allergic reactions and histamines cause the opposite effect, known as bronchoconstriction. Respiration is an involuntary function. Nerve impulses transmitted by the pons and the medulla oblongata to respiratory muscles regulate the respiratory rate. The rate of normal breathing is 12 to 15 breaths per minute. The body adjusts the rate and depth of normal breathing in response to metabolic needs. When the body uses more oxygen, or holds too much carbon dioxide, sensors in the circulatory system, called chemoreceptors, send signals to the brain. The rate and depth of ventilation or breathing increases so that more gas can be exchanged. Involuntary breathing mechanisms can be overridden by the cerebral cortex. Actions, including talking, sneezing, and coughing, can also alter breathing patterns for short periods of time. Sneezing is an involuntary expiration of air to rid the nasal passages of foreign material. Particles that enter the nostrils and irritate nerve endings in the nasal mucosa trigger impulses that are transmitted via the fifth cranial nerve to the brain's sneezing center in the medulla. This sets off a respiratory response. Rapid inspiration fills the lungs, the epiglottis and vocal cords close, and the muscles of exhalation in the chest and abdomen tighten in a spasmodic contraction. These events create a buildup of pressure in the lungs. When a sufficiently high level of pressure is attained, the vocal cords relax, the epiglottis opens, and an expulsion of air rushes through the nose and mouth. The force of the sneeze propels the irritants out of the nasal cavity.
Inhaled air and ingested nutrients both pass through the oropharynx behind the oral cavity. A cartilaginous structure called the epiglottis directs food and fluid away from the trachea and into the esophagus, preventing inhalation of this material. The stem of the epiglottis attaches to the hyoid bone and the anterior rim of the thyroid cartilage. The superior portion of the epiglottis moves freely and can swing up or down like a trap door. With each swallow, the larynx rises and the epiglottis folds down over the laryngeal opening, closing off the airway. If particles make their way into the trachea, the cough reflex pushes air forcefully up through the larynx, forcing the particles back up and out. During inhalation, air containing oxygen passes through the nose and mouth to the lungs. During exhalation, air containing carbon dioxide and other waste passes out the same path. This process of moving air in and out of the lungs is called pulmonary ventilation. In the lungs, oxygen travels from tiny air sacs called alveoli into the bloodstream. At the same time, carbon dioxide travels from the bloodstream into the alveoli for elimination. This process of gas exchange between the lungs and the blood is called external respiration. Internal respiration exchanges gases between the blood and the body's cells.